everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Zeke Garcia. Hello. Sam Healy. Welcome back, folks. It's, we were just talking. It seems like it's been a bit since we've done a top ten. Well, we yes. did a top five at Dice Tower Con. That's correct. We're doing a top ten next week, our top ten anticipated games from Gen Con. Mm -hmm. okay. But right now we're talking about intellectual property games. It's been a while since we've done this. Several years, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, this means games that came from video games, from books, from movies, from TV shows. Comics, whatever. Uh, this, of course, is, if we had done this list 20 years ago, I would have said, my number one, I'm done. I don't think any of these games were, you know, my list were in existence then. Or even any of the games I considered, I don't think were on a list. Yeah, a lot of games were like straight to video type stuff. Uh, well, if you went to the mass market, you if you know, went you know to the I mean? store and you saw like Jurassic Park, the board game, it was like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can pretty much assume a game based on something else right. was bad. Yeah, that's the, probably one of the biggest changes to the industry in the last, let's call it, ten years, though. Yeah, really. I mean, I mean a game based on something. Yeah, it's ninety-nine percent garbage, likely it, to be. It would be, yeah, yeah, because they wouldn't. They wouldn't really pay attention to the theme. They wouldn't try to make mechanisms fit the theme. They would just take the theme and plaster it onto whatever boring game they already well, have. Well, I'm just roll and move. Yeah. Be exactly. the first to get six letters from for Mr. Cotter. Like, well, 100%. I Mr. played... Uh, Cotter? Welcome back, Cotter. I don't know what that is. That is a TV show from the 70s, if I'm not mistaken. You're old. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm older than he Stranger is. Stranger Things. I'm older than he is. I'm relevant. I was thinking, man, you're old. <laughs> I remember the last time I played a game of that type was the King Kong board game from the Peter Jackson King Kong film. Was Where, it good? Oh, my. <laughs> it was tremendously bad. Roll and move. It was very, very, very bad. All right, so I have some caveats to my list. One is I picked only one game per intellectual property. I didn't want this, for example, to be the top ten Star Wars games. Check. Did the same thing. Did you? I did. Oh, you, you, you made yourself do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were talking about it. Yesterday. Otherwise, it'd be a bunch of Cthulhu games. <laughs> Got it. Uh, I also, well, I had another thing that I did here. I Oh, the ranking of my list is how much I like the theme and game put together, not just my favorite game in, in that regard. Because the, now my number one is not necessarily my favorite of these games to play, but I thought it did a really good job at bringing the theme to life the best. That, that last sentence there, I think, is what I did. Um, how important is this theme to this game? How, how often in my head or in play... Do I reference that theme or think about, ooh, this is X thing? So, yes. Some, I did the same thing. Yeah, some of the games on my list, the theme is just so... <laughs> smacking you in the face. Street Fighter! You ain't got to... Oh, you, <laughs> you ain't got to think about the theme. It's there. You, you well, cannot. like, for me, one game that did not make my list, spoiler, is Robinson Crusoe. Because it's not that. That's what I mean. What about it has nothing to do with that book. What about Friday? That's it. That's the only thing in that entire game. But what about the game Friday? A little closer. I mean, like, that's a little that closer. That is not what you meant. <laughs> Come on now. I, I know he didn't, but <laughs> what a troll. Friday is the one <laughs> thing from the book that's in the game. The rest is all it could have been. Stranded on an island, the board game. Yeah. Oh, okay, Jonathan just mentioned is... He said it's Cthulhu Action IP, it's public domain. In this, I know that some of these intellectual properties are now public domain, but they're still whatever. They were intellectual properties at some point. Yeah, that's something I was going to get to, but I don't care. I raised that question two days ago. Yes, you did. Well, yes, and we I was prepared. Yeah, we this talked isn't about catching me off guard. If it's, if it's now public domain, it doesn't matter. I know it's technically not a property as in someone owns it, but based on, based on something. I think we'll have a little crossover, but I don't think we'll actually have a ton. Mostly because we're limiting ourselves to one game from genre. And like in these genres, I think that there might be crossover. Like you mentioned Cthulhu. If we did both put a Cthulhu game on our list, which may or may not happen, um, I, we would probably pick different ones. I think I will have two crossovers. I think I'll have, with both, with either of you, I will have one crossover with Sam and that's it. I think I'm going to have two crossovers and I think they're both with Sam. <laughs> Sam, you have a question? Um, I tried to say to you, you only one. 
from each genre. And then he failed. I failed. <laughs> okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, we, did, I, we didn't make that a rule. <laughs> Star Wars is just too juicy. No, there's a definite Top reason. 10 intellectual properties and Star Wars. No, 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 no. Uh, there are definitely nine different properties here. All right. I will say, though, that when I was going through this, even though intellectual properties are getting better oh, as time goes by, yeah. the games, there's still a lot of games that came across us like, oh, that's good and all, and it's better than it used to be, still doesn't even come close to making my top ten. Of course. And when I went through my top hundred games, which is a way I always start from these, I just go through that list, a good chunk of them are not intellectual property games. My favorite games are games where the, right. the theme of that game is its own theme, and I like it. I mean, hundred yeah. percent. I didn't. I, I don't always do that with these top tens, but I did it on this one, and I was surprised that uh, how few were actually on my top. Really, 10, the top one hundred. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, here we go. Let's start with number ten. Number ten. Oh, well, you're number ten. If that was me, sorry. I should go by the dice guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since we've done this. I'm all confused. All right. So my number 10 is uh, pr is definitely the least thematically connected game that is here. Although it's a fun game and I really enjoy it. Oh, Thanos cool. Rising, Avengers Infinity War. This is not a huge connection between... Like for Well, I, I don't know. It depends I think on the how theming's you look there. At it. The theming's yeah. there strong enough that these... Knockoff ones that they're coming out with oh, seem weird to me that that's they don't true. fit. That's true, yeah. But I mean, what I mean is, is that you know, you've got Captain America's team, and then you've got uh, the Black Panthers team, and then you've got uh, Doctor Strange's team, and they were all together. But, but that happens in the thing too. Yeah. I'm Doctor Strange, and I got Peter Parker, and I also took Scarlet Witch because, uh, you know, they're good people to have on my team. Okay, sure, but <clears throat> it's a great game it also has a very low entry point as far as how it how, how hard it is to learn and how hard it is to uh, get connected to the mechanisms and all that kind of stuff it's a low barrier of entry it's fun and it's got good artwork in it and then of course it's got that big huge Thanos or Thanos, however you want to pronounce it. Thanos, he's got uh, the whole boss thing, thing that's uh, right there in the middle. Well, of that goes to my top ten unnecessary components for a game. That's true too. <laughs> yeah. half, half the cost. That's true too. Game. But that's my number ten: Thanos Rising, Avengers: Infinity War. All right, my number ten is by far the least thematically connected, which is why it's number ten. This is the DC deck building game, and uh, go ahead. Yeah. It's a deck building game in which you are going to be using a bunch of different superheroes from DC to fight baddies, turn them to fight for you, a bunch of random nonsense that doesn't really fit the themes. But maybe it does, because those comics, everything happens, right? So who knows? I don't read comics. Yeah, you do? I don't read DC comics. <laughs> Anyway, my number 10 is This is, is not the, the least thematic. This is anti-thematic. No, 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 no. Anti-thematic would be if in DC deck building game, I was collecting Moo Moo Cows. But that's the thing. First of all... Who's a Moo Moo Cow in the DC universe? Well, first of all, don't ask that question. Remember Batman Cow? It's in the game. We saw that it. That cow. It's there. <laughs> yes. I have a model for it. I need to see this pronto. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Anyhow... In this game, you spend punches and kicks to, I guess, defeat villains yes. and heroes. Yes. And then you use those same villains to defeat other villains and heroes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, like the exact same game came out for NHL hockey. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Lord of the Rings. You can combine them. And it's Street great. Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. I like the so hockey, hockey uh, DC Nothing crossover. you put on your list will be worse than that pick. It's my 10, man. This was actually a, an extremely hard list for me to do without breaking that one per theme rule. <laughs> I kid you right. not. You should have broke that rule. I maybe should have, but this was scraping the bottom. I, I just don't like games based on uh, IPs that much. Unless This was a stretch. I kid involved. you not. This was quite the stretch. No, there's no kidding. I'm not arguing no, with no, you. No, no, listen. This pick is garbage is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> We all, we all agree. All right, there we go. My number 10 just had an expansion announced, I think, today, actually. What? 
You are such a hipster and cult of the future lover. No, an expansion at the game. It's villainous, or Disney's villainous. They just announced one that's going to have... The new expansion has Scar. Um, is it Ilza? The, the, the Emperor's New Groove. Uh, what's her name? Uh, he's, 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 uh, anyway, she's hilarious. She's one of my favorite bad guys. I just can't remember her name. And then the uh, Radican from The Great Mouse Detective, which is awesome. I like, I like all three of those villains. I think they're cool villains. Anyway, in this game, you are a Disney villain, and you are trying to accomplish some sort of Disney villainous plot while other people play the heroes from your particular movie on you. Okay. Each villain does their very specific thing. This game, I think, works really well. It's a mass market game. Uh, but brings that Disney flavor. I, I'm, it's interesting that Disney pretty much refused to allow them to let the movies mix at all. Mm -hmm. But then thematically, that does make sense and help out as you're playing. Sure, right, right. So that's uh, Yzma. Yzma is the name of the bad guy from oh, Emperor's okay, New Groove. Yeah. Have you played this? Why do we even have that lever? No, I... I, I saw it being played at PAX, not last year, but the year previous. Sure. And uh, a couple of guys that I tend to fall in line with, or they fall in line with my taste, you know, we have similar tastes, said it's way too long for what it is. Mm -hmm. And so I, I stayed away from it. I don't have a huge huh. uh, gravi gravitas towards Disney anyway. So... I was. I never well, I'm not had like a, a Disney fan. I'm a person. I like Disney movies. Like, a, you know, most people like the Disney animated movies. I just don't. I don't get the people who watch them ten times and you're not a kid. But if I mean, if you do, that's fine. It's just not me. I, 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 I. It's not that I don't like watching the movies or anything like that. It's just that I don't have any desire to play a game about Disney villains. Now, when it comes to Disney music, I got you there. And now we're getting off topic. Let's go to number nine. All right. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine holds the Lord of the Rings uh, spot for this list. That is the Battle of Five Armies. This this almost made my list. Not Lord this is not the, the Lord of the Rings game you picked. Well, actually, I had a big argument with myself. It went on for several minutes. Um, as to whether Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit were the same universe or not. And I thought, no, 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 I know that it's the same universe, but like, can I say like, You know, you can go see a psychiatrist if you were arguing <laughs> same, with yourself well, the same about intellectual. whether or not The Hobbit no, I know, and No, no, I know they're in the same universe. What I mean is they same feel intellectual separated, property, yeah. right? But, but they're not. I get that. I just felt like they're slightly different. I would agree with that. You can buy the rights to The Hobbit and not necessarily get the rights to Lord of the Rings. You both need to go to psychiatrists and split the cost. If I want to put out a game based on The Hobbit, I need to buy the rights to The Hobbit. That doesn't mean I can now put characters that were not in The Hobbit from The Lord of the Rings into my game or my book or whatever I'm doing. Uh, I'm just trolling you. There are <laughs> trolls, yes, but do I have the right to use them? There are trolls in The Hobbit. Okay. Then I can. See what I'm saying? There are My also word. trolls in Lord of the Rings. But they're cave trolls. Also, DC yes. deck building game and has there's trolls. There's also the, 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 uh, the trolls uh, that were turned to stone are also in the Lord of the Rings. But I can use that sure if I can. make a movie about you just, they just have Captain to be, Marvel. They have to be stones. They have to be made out of stone. Infinity stones. Yes. Sam, why do you like the battle for five armies? Said the two people who interrupt it. Yes, thank you. Uh, battle of five armies. Some some people will probably think that this is inferior to War of the Ring. Oh, Kabuki Kid already got you. Yes, I imagine. I, I anticipated this. The reason I and I've said this before. The reason I don't like uh, War of the Ring is because it has this stupid yet thematic rule um, because it follows <laughs> what the book was written of. The good guys can't declare war until a certain time, or until right. You have to kind of like you have to kind of you have to let them attack you first. Sure, sure. Before you can okay, what is it, Roy? You're over there looking at me, seething. No, 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 no. Political about it. Have to be political about it. What does that mean? You have to push them into war. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't happen. But they have to attack you first. But you wouldn't attack because attacking is wrong. No, you have to declare war, whether they actually attack you or not. They have to declare war first. Yeah, you have to like get the tokens down anyway. So you yes. don't like that. I was play, right. Play I don't want to. <laughs> Battle of Five Armies. Told. There's none of that. 
there's none of that. You just go in, you start smacking stuff around, and it's got great miniatures as well. It's a really fun game. It's what I wanted War of the Ring to be, and it wasn't. So I well, like I think Battle War of the Ring is also better. more grandiose. Oh, it is. It is. It's much more epic. It's much more epic. Because Battle of Five Armies is one battle. Absolutely. Lord of the Rings, they're all like happening many small battles. Okay. Yes, correct. They're both good games. So <laughs> this one I like better, actually. Number nine, the this, Battle of Five Armies. This is not on your list, you're saying, Tom, huh? This is not. This was my number, I don't know, because it, it wasn't, wasn't allowed. Anything not on the list is 11. That's man. right. Oh, my. <laughs> all right. My number nine is the Street Fighter deck building game. It's not. Um, <laughs> oh boy, I was about to say. <laughs> no, my I'm number. Sure, you could do ten different intellectual properties and get away with it. For the deck building game, <laughs> oh, you that betcha. Would be... No, my number nine is Nemo's War Second Edition, about of course Captain Nemo and the Nautilus, and um, this is pretty thematic. You're sailing the different oceans, attacking ships, warships, and so on, uh, finding treasure. Avoiding the different governments, seeking you, trying to hunt you down, putting pressure on you, having adventures is the deal. This is a solitaire game or multiplayer. It's a solitaire game. Huh? The Victory Point Games game. Yeah, from their fancy line, though, well, thankfully. Yeah. Because otherwise... Oh. Yeah, you stay away from them. <laughs> Avoid them like a plague. Yeah, no, this is a good game. It's a, <laughs> Like I said, a solitaire game. This is second edition also, much better than the first. And uh, I do enjoy it. It's a neat, solitaire uh, sort of adventure, chucking dice. There's a lot of that kind of game. And again, the reason it makes this list specifically is because I do find it thematically engaging. It, it puts me in that world. Cool. It does a good job of that. Great artwork, too. Uh, so there you go. My number nine, Nemo's War. Definitely second edition. My number nine, I did not expect to make my list, but I had to put it on my list because of how strongly thematic it is and I do like it I just probably won't play it again because I think a lot of games have replaced it game wise for me but the theme is there and that would be Battlestar Galactica hmm. we gotta put this one on the list I mean we were talking hmm. we just was it yesterday what? or this morning about <laughs> about can this game be re, could we you retheme it we, no. we talked about Stranger Things or whatever but it would be hard because this game is so tied to that theme so tied to the point where they did, they made a dice version of this game that they couldn't get the rights to or whatever. Someone and then they republished that as Dark Moon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Who you're kind of like, huh? Who did that? Stronghold. I know. I just wanted you to say it. Oh, okay. Bonacore pays him like two dollars, I think, every time <laughs> you say Bonacore or Stronghold. But Battlestar Galactica itself. <laughs> You know, just the the whole tension that you feel when you watch the show. I've always said that you don't need to watch Battlestar Galactica to play the game. You don't. You can just play it, and it's a, it's a good game. But if you have watched it, you will not sit there and criticize it very much. You'll be like, yeah, this is what the show was like. Yep. Oh, the Centurions got on the ship, and they're walking through. Oh, no. You know, it, just, it has that feel to it, and it does such a good job of it that it's the, the theme and the, the mechanisms are almost, like, inseparable to me to some yeah, degree. Yeah, yeah, sure. Spoilers. Centurions getting on the spoilers. Oh, spoilers word. for Battlestar Galactica? Nobody should be watching no, this. I, I went back spoil and we watched the episodes again and I forgot that to happen and that took me by surprise again. Uh, I that's a, the one that 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 that's that probably my top ten favorite episodes from that series. Yeah. That's a good episode. No, anyway, that's my number nine. Battlestar Galactica. Number eight. My number eight. My number eight has uh, artwork from Vincent Dutrait, one of my favorite artists, and it is based on a book. You know what it is? No. I know what it is. Rising Fire? Treasure Island. Oh, 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 oh. Treasure Ooh. Island. Oh, I did not consider this This is one. a very Does fun make your list? game. No, it did not. Because he didn't my think my of it. That's right. If no, if I thought of it, I don't think it would have made the list. It's still 11, really good. Number 11. There's a lot of great games. No, that's true. But I like this one because of its um, interesting mechanisms more than anything else. 
you know, the whole idea of searching and you have a, an a, a area that you can search and you a certain way that you can travel and that you're drawing on the board and all of this other kind of stuff, it feels like you're a bunch of pirates, a crew that's standing over a table trying to search for things. Okay, we're going to go over here and search for this. Well, we didn't find it there. All right, let's go over here and try this. And it felt that way. And it was really interesting. So it's just kind of stuck in my mind as a really good implementation of that intellectual property. I think this is Treasure a good choice. Island. It's Treasure Island is a pretty cool, cool game. And I think the theme comes through. I know that 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 you were not as big a fan of it because deductively putting it mildly, yes. <laughs> putting it mildly the deduction <laughs> part isn't as strong but the theme part's pretty strong yeah i agree with that i think that this is a very thematic pick it's a good pick if you like the game it's a great pick all right my number eight um <laughs> no i think if you like if, the game if you think this game's fine if, good for you young man it fits the list to a t i wouldn't put it on mine because i don't like it is what i'm saying would if you like the book would you like the game no, not necessarily. I'm not reading. I'm doing, like, yeah. geometry on a board. And those two activities are completely unrelated. Reading and drawing circles or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're not. But related. if you enjoy the book, you enjoy the theme of the book. So maybe you'll like You it. might enjoy the board game. And if you do enjoy the board game, the fact that it is based on that will strengthen that enjoyment. Pop quiz. What's the best Treasure Island movie? The one called uh, Treasure Island. It's the Muppets. It's actually Treasure Planet. Oh, Treasure Planet is my second Treasure favorite version. Planet no, it's the, the best one. All right. Okay, Continue. anyway, my number eight is one that we'll see a little bit later on on somebody's list. And this is The Godfather, Corleone's Empire. Mm. Uh, of course, based on the Godfather movie, I guess, because they have the because uh, of the artwork. Um, movies. Movies, sure. Which are based on books. But anyway. Uh, Third movie was the best, right? That's, five, that's what I hear. That's, that's the consensus. Anyway, this is a pretty interesting game with some cat and mouse type play, some jostling for control, uh, muscling in. It fits the ideas that are contained in the movie and it uses some of the concepts like a three act breakdown for the whole flow of the game. You know, it, it kind of borrows some of the ideas from the movie. It isn't the most thematic thing ever, but I think it inhabits that same world really well. You know, it gives you the same mafioso type vibes that you would get from watching that movie. Yeah. So I like it. It uh, scales well also. I like that. I've actually played this with two players all the way down to two, and that works well, surprisingly. So, huh. so this is a good one. Uh, the Godfather Corleone's Empire. To me, my main issue with this one and the reason it isn't higher is because I find a lot of similarities to Blood Rage in it. And I just like that game better. That alone should put it higher. Okay, this well, list. I didn't put it on my list. I like the game a lot, and I think it's really good. It just, for me, as much as I like the game, feels like a generic gangster game, which I'm okay with. Mm -hmm. I don't feel any Godfather stuff from it. But it's just generic gangster. But that gentleman on the cover is from that Godfather movie. Is it? Yeah, I know. And I get that. He's holding a cat. Uh, that makes you evil. That's right. If you're on the cat, petting a cat, very few good in guys are doing at that. At a like, table. Like if you're sitting people. at a table, at a meeting, petting a cat, you're evil. <laughs> you're the bad guy. <laughs> anyway, my number eight, The Godfather, Corley owns Empire. Cheers. My number eight is my Cthulhu pick. What is it? Eldritch? It is Eldritch. Although it was a tough call because I wanted to put Mansions of Madness. Mm. But Mansions of Madness got knocked down. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Star Trek Fleet Captain Eldritch Harbor. I'm reading my list maybe off key. That would be an interesting crossover. That's a weird Star Cthulhu Trek. Cthulhu and Star Trek. All right, so not spoil my own list or anything. Eldritch Horror. Yeah, I like Cthulhu a lot, but I like Cthulhu more when it gives me more of an adventure vibe. The straight, oh, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're going to die, you're dead. Or first you went mad. Like total horror as opposed to Eldritch Indiana Horror. Jones esque vibe. Sure, I mean don't get me wrong, there's still horror stuff in Eldritch Horror, and some of the the, the expansions there's one with like dreams and stuff happening. It's, I, I I like that, but Cthulhu has a kind of gross side to it. Yeah. Um, and the Eldritch kind of pulls back on that a bit, but still lets me see it. Like oh, giant spider here, oh, nasty zombies over here. Mm -hmm. But then I'm like, all right, let's deal with this. Okay. And I, I just like that aspect. I like the world traveling thing of it. So, barely beating out Manchester Madness, my number eight, Eldritch Horror. Cool. 
Number seven. My number seven uh, is a game that I uh, actually kind of just came across not really by, you know, random chance or anything like that, but I wasn't looking for it because I already liked The Dead of Winter so much as my Walking Dead themed game that eh, all the other ones that were coming out interesting were not up to snuff. I mean, there were a couple of mass market-ish Walking Dead games that, There's a we, lot were, of Walking Dead that games. we were like, wow, this is horrible mm-hmm. as a game. The Walking Dead No Sanctuary, however, is not bad at all. It really uh, carries over that theme of The Walking Dead well, so much so that each of the different characters' personalities are even part of the mechanisms of the game. I have not played so, this one. This one's based on the TV series. Well, it says AMC on it. Yeah. Well, some are based on the comic book, some are based on the, correct, the TV. Correct, And And that that's my connection to The Walking Dead anyway. I never, I've read some of the comic books, but I haven't read through all of them. I, I've, I've watched all of the seasons of Walking Dead except for the last one. If you I, ever think that Walking Dead, the TV show, is getting too humorous and light, read the comics. I understand, yeah, I've heard that. But uh, this is a great <laughs> miniatures game. Setup is a little um, long. Uh, Teardown isn't that bad, but uh, the way the game actually plays is really fun, and, and it th- it's 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 very thematic, and I I really have enjoyed it. So I'm running out of a loss for words, so I apologize. But that's my number seven, The Walking Dead No Sanctuary. If you're running out of a loss for words, you're about to find words. Oh, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> I'm hoping that's what happens. That's that's. I'm hoping, yeah. You are. Okay, there you go. You'll find it. <laughs> You're okay, buddy. All right, my number seven that is... That picture sucked his soul out earlier. <laughs> Cthulhu got him. That's what it was. You were talking about Cthulhu, <laughs> and uh, he consumed his, his vocabulary. My number seven, Legendary Encounters, an alien deck building ah, game. I knew you'd pick this one. You like it. I like this. I like the Predator one as well, but I think this... Uh, I like this better. The Predator one had even more content, or at least it felt that way, but it was too much of a good thing. You know, it was, you could be the Predators, you could play through the different films. And then also you could play from the point of view of the Predators. And then when the Predator one came out, you can combine the Alien and the Predators, so that you are Predators hunting aliens. Well, that sounded interesting. It was set up, manipulation of card decks, it was so much. This was a little more pure, I enjoyed this more. Uh, I liked that you could technically combine the cast of the third Alien movie with the plot of the first one, if you wanted to. You could do that, but you could play through the films as well, and that that worked out pretty well. That gave me a a pretty solid thematic feel. Of course, you'd find like way more aliens than they ever found in the first movie. There was one. You know, that's true, but that would be and a then really you'd play slow through, game. Yeah, with you'd one. play through it and be like, "Hey, egg, alien, chest burster, this, that." You know, that wasn't like the film, but still, I really like this one. This is a well put together evolution on Legendary, which I like better. Mm-hmm. So, Legendary Encounter is an alien deck building game. Is my number seven pick. My number seven is Star Trek Fleet Captains. What? <laughs> I would have never thought it. No, All right, I didn't think you'd have this on there. Star Trek is is an IP that has a lot of games, board games based on it, yes. and yet I bet you both considered almost none of them. I considered very briefly Star Trek Panic. But wow, so did I. But but other than that, I'm telling you, most oh, there's a lot of bad Star Trek games out there, yeah. and especially if you go back in the 70s and 80s, there's some really bad ones out there. Star Trek Fleet Captains. Well, I'm not I, starting with much. I mean, you know, that IP is kind of weak anyway. You don't okay, like well, Star Trek. It's garbage is what you're saying. You don't like any Sam of Sam Haley hates Star Trek. I don't. Get him. I what, don't hate Star Trek. What's your favorite Star Trek? The uh, one with R2-D2 in it. Okay. I thought, I thought you liked the one with uh, MacGyver in it. Um, MacGyver? No, that's the one MacGyver. I like. Isn't that who that is? MacGyver? Why am I saying MacGyver? I mean, uh, Quantum Leap guy. Yeah. Enterprise? Yeah, Enterprise. I thought that's that was the your one favorite. I like. That's no. one you like. I've watched a bunch of it anyway. Him and that 
alien Thought doctor. It was cool that uh, Boba Fett had a cameo appearance on Deep Space Nine, though. Wow. Okay. So what I want, I like this game because it is all the Star Trek stuff in one box. Uh, you can play the Klingons versus the Federation, and then if you buy the expansion Romulans, and and um, you can. You go through and it's like a whole season of a of a thing. You go through and oh, here's the dribbles and here's the, you know, this event that happened and this event. You can do fighting. You can beam people down to planets. There's a lot going on in the game. And then it's a deck shuffling game where you pick a few decks, shuffle them together, and that's your deck. So you can have different characters. And it has most of the characters from the TV shows in it. I don't think they got the rights to everybody, okay. but it has most of the main ones in it. So okay. if you want to play Picard, or you want to play Kirk, and you know have Kirk with Picard's crew and whatever, and I like that. It's, but it's kind of the Federation is good at looking at planets. The Klingons are basically want to whoop up on everybody else. Whoop, you know. So it works really well. Could use a component upgrade for sure, you know. But I still enjoy it. That Star Trek fleet captains. Are they still coming out with a uh, Picard, a new Picard TV show? Oh yeah, the internet's going nuts about it. Yeah. They like released a picture yeah. that shows him and a dog, Standing and people are like, there. "What? Yeah. Like, dude, wait for the trailer before we get too excited." Yeah. Number six. All right, my number six, and pretty much from here on out, you're going to have theme uh, upon theme upon theme upon theme uh, with every single game uh, that is here. Looping uh, Chewy. So my number six, uh, not absolutely not known for its uh, rule book quality, uh, is Batman <laughs> oh, it made the Gotham list. City Chronicles. Yes, it did. I thought about it, but I haven't played it. I only played it before production, yeah. so I no, haven't enough I've, yet. I've played it before production. I've played it a few times after we've received copies here. And it's fun. It really is a fun game. But my goodness, it's like <laughs> somebody was trying to make it difficult to learn how to play the game with that rule book. Yeah. Is there like has someone written an alternate rule book online? You feel like someone would have done that know. by now. I don't know, but Maybe. I mean, I just don't understand how somebody could a team, even even if it's a team of editors, I don't understand how they could have made it more difficult <laughs> than it is. Maybe it's a giant troll type thing. Know. They're like. Let's see if people complain about this rule book. But I'm telling you, when you get through all of that and you get it all figured out, maybe you got to watch a few videos uh, to hammer out some of the details. Oh, it's a really fun game. And it's, I mean, it's it's uh, Batman, DC Universe, and all that roll up into the box. Uh, and you, it is fun. It's dice chucking. Uh, you have to use strategy. You have to move around. You have to use the board uh, for cover and that board. type of stuff. It's... It's really, really fun, and that's why it made my list. Not because it's a good rule, a good rule book. Number six, Batman: Gotham City Chronicles. Mm. My number six is Lord of the Rings, or the Lord of the Rings. The original? Yeah, baby. The cooperative game? Yes. Oh, I thought he was gonna give me a psych. Yeah, uh, okay. High five, and you? No, I man, like this, this game, man, game, dude. Uh, and I do think it's actually fairly thematic. Not the expansion, but the original game. I'll go with you on that. Yeah, Friends I mean, and I'm Foes was not very thematic, I thought. Friends and Foes, I've played. I did not play the Sauron one, the, the next expansion after that. Um, the good thing about the first expansion is it did add a couple of places that they skipped on the main board. Oh, I, okay, I'll give you that. But you know? like defeating a bunch of enemies and then you win? I agree. That made no I sense. I agree. But I gave you more to do. This one's neat because it's all about... You are the hobbits. There is no other character you can be. And it's all about the, that group of characters pushing through the world, trying to cooperate. Including the hidden fifth hobbit. Fatty. Well-known <laughs> hobbit. Um, Samwise's older cousin. Fatty McGee. Twice removed. Proud foot. Proud uh, fit. Uh, I like the decision points in the game. All the players stopping and going, okay, we're about to flip a tile. It might be bad. Do we want to use one of these cards now mm. or save it? The decisions in the game and the discussions in the game are what make it. 
if you look at it without playing, it will look very abstract. And it, and it is to a certain degree. The vibe it creates yeah. is very cooperative, and that feels synonymous to what's going on in the movies or the books or whatever. So again. This thing, this game is like a hundred million times more thematic than a lot of the Lord of the Rings games that are being put out right now. That's not hyperbole at all or anything, but... That is oh, true that's fact. That's hyperbole, yes, but... I've seen it on the box. It says it on the box. Hyperbole is a, is a mechanism that we can use to prove a point or to state a point at the very least. I agree and 100%. 110%. Well, you're wrong. I mean, the fact that it's cooperative no, I, makes it more thematic than a I lot of games. I get it. I, I, I right thought now. it was very thematic myself. I just, To me, I got bored of the puzzly nature of it. It's like the same puzzle over sure, and over. Sure. But I can't argue with how it works. That's right. Be quiet. This I is like one it. of the first cooperative games that I ever played. I yeah, think me too. Me too. a lot of what Z says is correct. I say that However, because he has already mocked my next pick. Oh, yeah, yeah, my next baby, pick, what is number it? six, yeah, yeah. is Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> and here is why. That's a good Broad choice. Is that link. Because Robinson Crusoe borrows from multiple IPs, and I like how it does so. It has the Swiss Family Robinson scenario. It has the King Kong scenario in an expansion. Um, yes, but it, it has these now, different ones. And even the basic one, he tried to build a fire. He failed. He didn't die. He lived on. And Friday is in the game, and so is the dog. Now, I get that you are not Robinson Crusoe. You are multiple people. But it's saying, what if you were in the same situation like Robinson Crusoe and land there? It works for me. The theming of the game works. Uh, Z's just being fuddy daddy, and also he picked the Godfather and has the same problems, so I can't really. Okay, fair, fair. Of course, I also poo pooed on that for the same reason, but that's not the point. The point is we're both right. All I need to do is stand back and hand you a shovel. <laughs> I got it. What am I doing? <laughs> Why do you have a gun? Um. <laughs> no, I mean, I already said the issues I had with this. It's a good game. It's just. For this specific list, where it's all about the IP, I couldn't, I couldn't sell it. So, let's move on to number five. Number five. All right, my number five. Come on, Sam. My you haven't five. hit either one of my two crossovers yet. This is probably going to be one of them. Come on, baby. Fury of Dracula. Oh, dang it! No fear. Are you of Dracula. serious? Yeah. You don't know me. Well, someone, I figured, this is, what, this is what you consider, I don't like the Dracula IP at all. What? Why would what you, you, you don't what? Like the Dracula IP? Mina, Van Helsing, that what? other guy with a bow. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just saying I don't like the original book Dracula, I don't like it. Have you uh, read I, Dracula? I like half of it, it's really boring. <laughs> kind of boring, it's kind of boring. Uh, I don't like any of the Dracula movies. Have you read Lovecraft? That's much better than Dracula. Some of this stuff. No, I've seen some Lovecraftian just... movies that I liked. Okay, well, all right, that's fine. No, I do actually hate You don't movies. like so the I, Dracula I movies either? Like Francis Ford Coppola's Dracula, you don't like it? No, I don't like any of that oh, stuff. I like that. Unless it's funny. Oh, like Dracula Dead and Loving It? Abbott and Costello. <laughs> I like that movie that's a lot! A good, that's a good, I really like that movie. It's <laughs> a funny movie, yeah. <laughs> well. Sorry, um, Sam. We keep waylaying you. I don't, I don't, yeah, I guess. But The Fury of Dracula is is another cooperative-esque. It's actually one versus all, where one player takes the Dracula persona and the other mm. people at the table take on the role of the hunters trying to track him down. Thing is, Dracula is leaving behind little, you know, landmines everywhere. You know, he's got uh, some... <laughs> Yes, guano. That is correct. Bat guano. Literally, no one knows Dracula actually All right, come leaves on. guano. Thanks a lot, Z. Anyway, I apologize. Um, and not only are you trying to find Dracula, you're also trying to battle through all of his minions that he's leaving behind. I should have said minions. There you go, baby. And <laughs> Better. Not anything else. Uh, but Better. it's it's a really fun kind of game where everybody can kind of work together to try to find Dracula. And Dracula, at the same time, is, is trying to be sneaky to where he is and hopefully 
uh, making it to where they don't pick up it on his trail. Right, so right. it's really fun. I, I enjoy it a lot. I think the uh, third and fourth editions graphically took a step away from where I wanted it to be. I liked the older. We like two. Cover, yeah, the second yeah. edition better huh. than I did third or fourth edition. I'm fine with this the way it is, the way it looks now, but um, I, I don't know. I just like the older, you know, old map look, I guess you could say. Sure, right, right, right. So that's my number five, Fury of Dracula. All right, my number five is my Batman pick, and this is Batman Gotham City Strategy Game. Really? The Apollo Mori game. I well, think this you, is very you're a villain. You are the villains, yeah, each player is a villain. You are doing the things you would expect the villains to do. You're amassing goons, and you are taking over sections and districts of the city. And Batman is, in the game, almost used as a tool to send to the other villains sure. and have Batman, like, Which is thematic, because they would do stuff like that. Absolutely. Like, send a secret tip to Batman, or, or you know, leave a clue somewhere. Be like, hey, Penguin's about to... Bust, uh, you know, through the harbor. <laughs> Go over there and deal with it while I do this over here. Uh, uh, uh. So, I like the theme in this game a lot. It's a very euro -y kind of design. You know, mechanically, it's a fairly simple game. It's not, there's not, it's not a very flashy game, I guess is what I mean yeah. to say. But I find it a nice twist on the usual <laughs> Batman game. Yeah, you know, I like it. Being bad, the bad guys, and... The way Batman works in the game makes sense. When he shows up, you don't beat him. You know what I mean? Like, he smacks you around, pulls you back a little bit, and you'll recover from that, ideally. <laughs> but yeah, I enjoy this one. Batman Gotham City strategy game is, uh, is an excellent pick uh, oh. for this <laughs> kind of list. I couldn't be prouder. <laughs> Glad you agree with yourself. <laughs> and it only gets better from here on out. <laughs> like, yeah, that was an excellent choice I made. <laughs> I want to congratulate myself for this list. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. My number five is also my Batman pick. Really? Sort of, kind of. Uh, so it's Dice Masters, DC oh, and or geez. Marvel. Yes. I knew, I knew, I knew he was going to play I realize that I'm possibly the only person in this city of Miami who plays this game anymore, um, other than my daughter. But I do like the Dice Masters. Now, here's the thing. Marvel has a lot of games, and I only picked one, but I... That's, that was stretching it. Like, I didn't put Legendary on the list. I love Legendary a lot. Yeah. But Legendary is a... I like this a little bit better. It was tough. Legendary Did you not pick Legendary because of the theme? No, Legendary is a good theme, okay. It's not, like, amazing theme, but it works really well. And I like this one, too. So here's the thing. I picked this one over Legendary because this one allows me to play DC and Marvel heroes. So this checks off both boxes, you mean? Yeah. Now, I know that there's certain things in the game that are not as thematic, you know, when you're fighting each other. And, like, oh, is there two Batman out there? There's two Batman dice. What does that mean? Well, that means he's so using... one-two punch. Yeah. Both that, arms. Right. Um, so, and especially since I kind of punch. mocked the uh, DC deck builder earlier, and this one has about as many themes as that at this point in time since they're doing WWE wrestling, and I get that. This um, is way more thematic than DC deck building game. I agree. Even though I feel like that was a uh, troll lying was, there. No, that wasn't trollish. That was sarcasm? Uh-huh. Okay. Tried and true. I'm learning. But but I feel like the other versions of this game, as much as I don't mind them, like the, the Warhammer and the, I haven't played WWE, but the Warhammer and the Dungeons and Dragons, they don't work thematically in the, in the sense of this game. Well, I think Marvel does. And let's move on to number four because I, I have a much better thematic game for that one. There's a wrestling version of this? It's yes. coming out. <laughs> Number four. Get him, Sam. My number four. That's it. You're going down now. Is this an excellent now. choice? It's it's a very very good. I think it's okay to be proud of our list. I, I'm. I, I want am, you to embrace. I am proud of my list, especially after hearing half of y'all's. Um. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. My number four uh, is a game called Big Trouble. In Little China. Of course. What? Big trouble. No in one China. guessed this in chat. I'm sure they did <laughs> not. Know. This is a great thematic game that has. Now, if you've, because there's a lot of people there. This has a cult, you know, not not really cult classic, but this is a classic '80s action movie uh, from way back. So, if you've not seen the movie, 
you're not going to think that it has very many thematic ties to it. You're just going to see the mechanisms and how they work together. I've played this with people who have not seen the movie, and they and had fun with it. Them. No, they they had fun Watch playing that. the movie. Stop the game. I Go have had room. people. I've had had. I have had people say, "We're watching this when we get home," because it was at a game night. Oh. And they played the game, and then they said, "We're going to go home and watch this." Sam movie. brings it on his iPad. It's like, all right, before we start. <laughs> wow! Could you imagine? Oh man, what a long game night! <laughs> before we play this game, you're gonna watch it. Yeah, but it's really cool. Uh, each of the different characters feels thematically different, as they should, because they're based on the different people in the movie. Uh, they don't do similar things. Uh, everybody has their own little specialty that they can do. Um, rolling the like. dice is, uh, uh, or rather, how you allocate the dice in your grid on your player board is, is where a lot of the decision making has to happen. Okay. Uh, going through and attacking um, Lopan at the end feels more like just a dice chucking attack fest. When you're on... Well, in the movie I felt like <coughs> that's kind of what it was. Right, but when you're up on, on top it has a little bit more of a you got to go get this, and you got to go get that, and you got to go get this, and you're trying to level up your character before you go to fight David Lopin. And so it's Is Snake Plissken in this game. The actor who played Snake Plissken is in this game. Yes. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my Call number snake. four. Big trouble in Little China. All right, my number four is. Uh, Talk about the only person who plays this game. I think I might be the only play person who plays this game in the state. This is Nightmare Before Christmas trading card game. Oh my uh, word! Uh, if you change that to the country, <laughs> I will agree with no, you. No, no, no. There's some people who play this one. I uh, played. It. I've, I've played it. Yeah, I have a have, lot. I have a decent amount of this it. game, and I think it's a, absolutely one of the very best trading card games that ever got made, oh, and that, probably failed. That is because it did not feel like a trading card game. And once you had a deck made, there was no good reason to buy more cards. Right, right. There, this, there was no reason this was a trading card game at all. It should have just been right living card game, or they put five decks in one box, and that was the whole game. I agree. Like Villainous. How old I is this? I agree. This is uh, pretty old, I guess. I don't know. Because that graphic design was horrible. Yeah, yeah. This is old. This, you know. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I really like it. It's kind of a city or area kind of building or control game. You're bringing out the characters, you're activating abilities. If you have enough characters in one location, you can trigger that power. It's kind of, this is an Andrew Parks design. Uh, he designed yeah. it with Zev, actually, as a co-designer on this Are game. you serious? Yeah, yeah. They're both listed as the designers. Wow. So I really do enjoy it. And I was into this game long before I knew who either one of those people was, by the way. It's not, this is not mm. a pandering pick. I just like the game a lot. Uh, I still got a bunch of it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I really like this card game. Is it fun if you haven't seen the movie? Um, probably not. Yeah. The Ooh. Well, let's move back. The hate Next coming time. your way. Well, then, when we play this, I'll do that <laughs> iPad move on you. <laughs> you you got to at least hear the songs from this yeah, movie. Yeah, man, what's this? Is. Some of the songs. What's this? this You've never seen the film? The, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard this what's song. This? This. My number four is my Lord of the Rings pick, which uh, is... Oh, wait. Mm -mm. The new one? You think it's the new one? It has to be. Probably. Yeah, it is a new one. Lord of the Rings Journeys, Journeys in, in yeah. Middle Earth. Yeah, yeah. Now, this one's not based on the movie, even though I like the movies a lot. This one's based on the books. There's not very many games that are based on the movies, actually, if you come to think of it. Some bad ones. Some dice. It's easy to get the, you know, it's like, easy to get the rights to the books, I guess, anyway. Probably. But this one... And this is why I didn't put Match of Madness on the list, because they're very similar to the same game. I really like this one. This is such a strong theme. It doesn't follow the books. It's like, I think, a prequel to the books or something. But the way that the stories go through and you do fights and the, the app brings out that adventure. I mean, this one's extremely strong thematically for me. I really like it. I like the fact that it, the, the app handles a lot of that fiddly stuff I don't want to deal with and at the same time it feels like a strong storyline in the game um, so yeah that's pretty much all I got to say about that have you played the Rings. solitaire yes yeah you like it solitaire I feel like that's a trap but yes 
Why would that be a trap? Why would I care if you like something solid? We already know you play Gloomhaven Solitaire. Not. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows you're a solitaire gamer at heart, and you only put up with other people at the table so that you can review games. If every game had a solitaire mode, you'd be the happiest man alive. End of discussion. <laughs> yeah. Number three. All right. My number three. Come on, baby. Is hey, I got two picks here for Sam's top three. I can't figure out what the third one would be. Go ahead, Sam. My number three is where I ran into some trouble with straying away from the single <laughs> genre for each pick. I okay. can't imagine why. Um, well, it's because the game that I picked to go on my list has replaced another game that I could have chosen to adhere to said rule. <laughs> um, There's no rule. I, I, I said specifically you didn't have to follow it. My number three is Star Wars Outer Rim. Dang it. What? I, he's, he's like all hot in this game lately. You did haven't this, put a Star did this, Wars... Did this cross off Firefly? It did. <gasps> Good. As well it should. This did cross off Firefly, yes, because I think it gives you the same exact feel with less convolution, and you can also ding, ding. do more of what you want to do in the universe than you could in Firefly. In Firefly, you have these decks that were, like, huge. And to find the people that you wanted on your crew, it was really hard. And sometimes you ended up with a, a crew with of a bunch of people that... After four hours, you could do it. You, you, didn't, you didn't know who half of them were. Well, or they, maybe you did, They were, like, in the background care. of the yeah, scene Yeah, they were background somewhere. characters. Yeah, that just doesn't happen with... With with uh, with outer rim. So is your set, have you had a Star Wars game on the list already? He has not. Yeah. Okay. Good. I got your top two then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. you do, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> You're a little harder to pinpoint, but I guess I'll try. After you say your three, I'll try to pick your top. This three. is a very it's a very fun game, and it's and it's very it's a very thematic game, and it's it's. Oh, yeah, it's taken out Firefly. It's not that I don't like Firefly the game. This is just better. It gives me the same feel than Fire that, that Firefly does or did in a better package and in an IP that I like better too. Right. So that's my number three, Star Wars. You're right. I, I know it's top two also, actually. I wonder, if I, would, do. I wonder if I would like this one. I don't think there's anybody watching that doesn't know what my top two are. I do wonder if I would like this game. It's probably pretty long, though, right? I heard it's no, only two hours. It's not. It's really? less than two hours. Why are you lying? I'm not. You know how slow I play? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> my number three is, uh, again, I don't think a whole lot of people like this, but I like it, Thunderbirds. That's based, of course, on the TV show, the original TV show, and this is one of the very few games I own, never mind like, that has screen caps. Screen captures from the TV show, and they're all oh, yeah, you normally Muppets hate that. or Puppets or whatever. But... Um, I really do like this game. It's a cooperative game. It's a fairly light cooperative game. The main thing I like about it, it kind of got me into the theme because I don't, didn't really know Thunderbirds growing up. It wasn't a thing I had uh, nostalgic feelings for. But uh, what I really like about it is, as a co-op, it is all about the logistics of the game. Because to fix problems around the world, you as the Thunderbirds need to be at the right place at the right time, sometimes with the right equipment. Getting everybody to be at the right place is really tricky in the game. And of course, there's multiple fires you need to be putting out at the same time. I like it a lot. It's not as, um, this is from, from Matt Leacock, Sim Designer's Pandemic, and this is not as approachable as Pandemic, but it isn't any heavier, really. Not really. It's I a very just, light game. I was just thinking with that description, you could have just described Pandemic. Yeah, it is from him, but it's, uh, you know, again, I think the trick here is oh, man, I got caught at the wrong place when we needed to be doing this thing, you know. Yeah. You can play a game of this during the loading sequence of an episode of Thunderbirds. Five. <laughs> four. Wait, get in the elevator. Three. Here we go. Yeah, so Thunderbirds is my number three pick. All righty, well, here's another one that is based on a book for me, number three. Actually, I knew the game before the book. No, I heard of the game, then I went and read the book, then I played the game. And that is The Reckoners. Yeah. 
The Reckoners, which came out last year to some buzz and then kind of died off the scene. No one's really talking about it now, but that's our hobby, unfortunately. The Reckoners, in which you are a group of normal humans, probably, maybe, read the book to find out, who take out a super villain, superhuman, because in this universe, every single superhuman, as far as you know, is evil. And then you got to fight them, find their weaknesses. It's an extremely hard cooperative game. We got mutilated. Shellacked, yes. And uh, I did. I have beaten it, though. Um, I really enjoy the book a lot. I feel like the book and this game, they did a good job bringing it to life. Brandon Sanderson's my favorite author. They've made several... Um, <laughs> There's a B in here. There's y'all. a B in here, yes. Um, How did the B get into the room? Mm. So, anyhow... Because uh, this game is definitely oh, I lost all track now. This stupid no, B. You, 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 um, go ahead, keep talking. I'll keep your eye on the B because I ain't gonna watch get stung by no B. And I'll watch myself. <laughs> go ahead. You like the game? I know you like. I know you like the series. You've talked about it a lot. Yeah, that, you had read it before you played this game. Right. I heard about the game and I was like, "What the Reckoners? What is this?" Hey, that's the guy who finished uh, Robert Jordan's series Wheel of Time. Okay, you I'll like go the read writer it. already. Okay. Good. I went read the books, then I played the game, and I thought it did a really good job back and forth. So that is my number three, The Reckoners. Number two. All right, <laughs> number two. Number two. All right, my number two is. Uh, Battlestar Galactica. What? Yeah. Uh, this is, again, we were talking, like, like Tom was saying earlier, we were talking about why, how, why, you, have why do you have a bucket, dude. <laughs> what are you, what are you do trying to do? You, have you ever caught a bee in a bucket? <laughs> if you have, that no, would be amazing. Get a fly swatter or something, not a bucket. I don't want the internet to get mad at me. Anyway, we were talking yeah, about Battlestar bee, Galactica. Man. I know. Go. A couple days ago, and whether or not you could change the IP, and I don't know that you can, and have it still be as good of a game. I thought about it. And I, I, I'm with you. I think that they would have to change the game a lot too, I agree. and yeah. the IP. Yeah, that's the thing. Something's got to change, and not just the pain. And so this really hits home to the kinds of games that I really enjoy. And it's really kind of antithetical to the kinds of IP games that used to come out. Because it used to be, who cares about the theme? We just have the IP, slap it on whatever, and put it out there. This is the exact opposite of that, where the theme matched the mechanisms so well that you felt like you were in... Uh, multiple episodes of, of uh, a season or what have you. And so this is just really good. It is long, though. Yes, it is. It's a long game, but I've never gotten up from a Battlestar Galactica game and felt, ugh, I just lost three to four hours of my life. You know, it never felt, it's always been, you know, as the game progresses, it gets more exciting. And I just really enjoy that. So that's number two, Battlestar Galactica. Alrighty, my number two, I guess it's going to end up being my only crossover with Sam, it looks like. Fury of Dracula is my number two. Third third edition, I do like better than second. Um, What about fourth? Fourth is the same thing. (laughs) And uh, like he said, it's that feeling of cat and mouse. You know, I like Mm -hmm. that. I like the hidden character moving on the board secretly. You either know where you are and you can be like, hee hee hee. Or, you know, sweating it because they're near you. Or you can be on the other side of that, searching. Every now and then you stumble on a clue and you go, ah, you're over here somewhere, aren't you? Aren't you? That's fun. The fighting in the third edition, I thought. pretty much Mina yeah. doing all the work in this game. Huh? Mina's doing all the work in this She's game. She's doing a ton of work in this game, really <laughs> narrowing it down, yeah. Uh, I like the combat in the third edition more. I like the turn structure in the third edition more. Don't get me wrong, second edition is solid. It's a good game. If you have it, you can have tons of fun with it. But this is a this is a fun, engaging game that manages to be dynamic without being and, and utilize that theme without being too quote unquote creepy. Mm. You know? You can be like this Dracula doesn't feel hokey, right? But it's also not oh, I won't play this with this person or that person because this is too horrific. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's neat that it can be approachable that way. Yeah. It's a long game, too. It's about three hours, two and a half, three hours. Um, and in this one, it doesn't bother me that much. You know, I like the, the hunt in this. So, yeah, my number two pick, Fear of Dracula, whichever edition, but probably third edition. My number two is based on a... I really don't know your top two at all. Comic I book, I guess. Uh, I originally didn't want to play this game because of the IP. or I'm not a fan of the cartoon version of the IP because as a kid, I, it was really stupid. And that's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shadows of the Past. Oh, he does like that. So this is based on the comics, which I really, I've really i since read, and they're really good. Mm -hmm. And even like some of the more modern, there's a modern 3D version of this cartoon that my kids watch. And I said, TMNT. It looked dumb, and I watched it, and it was actually really good. But when we were kids in the, in the 80s and 90s, this was a pretty stupid cartoon. I mean, what yes. about the movie? Did you, did you like the movie? Oh, no. Uh, you don't like any of the movies? No, I do not. I think that the first two movies are dorky and they're okay. The two new movies, or was there two or just one? There was two. Oh, yeah. They were cool, but I didn't think they were great. They were just okay. You like the okay. new movies cool more actions. than the old movies? I don't care. They're the same to me. What? Better plot, terrible, terrible suits and stuff in the first one. Way cooler looking the new one, but... Plot was okay. I like the mm. first one. Yeah. You mean the one from the nineties? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But the the comic is like better than I, I'm starting to sound like comic book guy, but it really is better. Good. The comic books are really well done. All right, I'll read they're them. They're great stories, <laughs> and they're you would like them because they're pretty gritty. Yeah, yeah, I'll read them. Anyway, this game is fantastic. It's based oh, on those comics. We're talking about in games? this game, it's one person's playing the bad guys against the others. It has a really good teamwork system. I haven't seen it in any other game where you have to work with the people next to you right. to fight the bad guy. It is an excellent game. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Shadows of the Past. This is all versus one also, or, or yes, all versus one. There you is can a, play one versus one, I guess. But there is a player who has to run the bad guys. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know if someone made a bot to run anything. I like. Playing the bad guys. No, no, no. That I like that it. too. I like that too. I thought it was fully co op. No, it's not. All right. Neat. And finally, number one. Yeah. We're back. The die rolling the is die back. The die rolling is back. Guess who's back? The die is back. I'm going to call again. a natural 20. Yeah, right. You know where that die has been? You just put it to your lips. The B That's was on disgusting. it. disgusting. That B, like, retired. He's cool. He calmed down. Go ahead. Oh. That was really close. <laughs> if you hadn't kissed it. That almost. Have... It's the. That was almost a natural 20. You're not kidding. 16. I'm going to call a natural 12. <laughs> what? <laughs> That did the exact same thing. Haunted Dice calling it here. Hashtag Ghostbusters. Which Go is season number one. It. You spoiled it. That's weird. We were both one one face away from 20. Sam got a 19. Okay, you and I have to roll off. Here we no, go. No, he's first. He won. Okay. <laughs> go ahead. Why are we rolling off? All right. Because of that. He got a natural one, y'all. Massive. What happens to me, critical, Game Master? Critical. Hang on, I need to roll on the chart. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> critical miss, man. Critical miss. What happens? Six. You lost a finger, though. It's not so bad. A six only means you All lost right, a finger. All right, Sam. You pick Everybody the order. Everybody knows what mine Wait, is. Are we picking the order? Yeah, what's the order, you Sam? Pick the order. Uh, I'll pick the order. I'll go first. Z will go last. You go middle. I don't know Z's at all. Oh, wait, is that going to mess stuff up? No, we already talked it through. That's why we brought okay, the dice out. Cool. Number one, Star Wars Rebellion. What? <laughs> Star Wars Rebellion. And Got this you, son. literally is, Outer Rim is like Solo in a box, almost. Like the movie. Okay. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah movie. okay. But With Ma Mario, Mario Band Peebles, that movie. Solo. Sure. You know what I'm talking about? Mario Van Peebles? Is he the director of that? He's I in it. Know, I don't know who Mario, it. Mario Van Peebles is. Somebody out there, there's one person, <laughs> maybe not even now, in like six weeks, will be like, ah, isn't, <laughs> Wasn't Mario Van Peebles in a Clint Eastwood movie called uh, Heartbreak Ridge? Why do I care? Way back in the day. But he had a movie called Solo. He's the lead in this Bat movie called Solo. That's all I need. 
You can. Then it is the same person, and no, that's not the ge- the, the movie I'm talking about. Oh my <laughs> word! <laughs> uh, the Han Solo movie, because it takes that avenue. Star okay. Wars Rebellion, however, is the great big epic picture of the struggle between the rebellion and the empire, and it is super duper thematic. Um, and it's a great game. And it's not actually that long compared to what <laughs> it is portraying. Yes, thank you. Juggle, juggle, juggle. Yeah. Juggle, it is. I mean, it is a long game. But it's, oh. it's just like Fury of Dracula where oh. it takes two or three hours. By two but three, it's engaging. Three. But yes. It's engaging. Per no, I mean it depends, because if somebody can deduce sure, okay, quickly if where, the, where lose, the rebel base is, yeah, you can lose quickly. You can lose quickly. But if you have people that sometimes. are, <laughs> uh, so that's my number one. Star Wars Rebellion. It's a, it's a great game. Star Wars in a box. I've always said that, and I will continue to do so. I really need to play this game. I really do. All right. Well, since this, I will play. Whereas some other games that some folks like, I won't play. But. No, you I already won't. said you played TI one, so <laughs> we're gonna get that. I'm not gonna play TI one. I've had people sending me tweets. I think yes, saying that they're gonna send they're, they're gonna send us a copy. I don't think you no. would like TI one. No, <laughs> you shouldn't have said it. If you so. want to send me a game, send me that Snake Plissken game. <laughs> <laughs> Escape from. All right, my number somewhere. one. Um, you want to have any guesses? Oh, man, I really can't Number figure this out. Number one IP game. You already did Lord of the Rings stuff. Star Wars stuff you did already? No, I did not do Star Wars yet. Oh. Well, then it's uh, Star Wars uh, I don't think dice it's Star Wars. or something. No, it's not. It. Um, Maybe Imperial Assault, but he's already got rid of all his... It's got to be Assault Imperial Assault. He likes Imperial Assault more than Rebellion, I think. Yeah, he does. Okay, Calling so it. so here's the thing. The Star now. Wars, I could have put a lot of the games on my list. Uh, X-Wing does X-Wing battles to a T. Yeah. Actually, I feel like it's based oh. on a video game more than anything else. Okay. But if I'm putting them in order list based on sure on theme and how much it came off from the movie, i got to pick Star Wars Queen's Gambit for my number one. Because regardless of whether you like that episode You've or gotta not. you got to pick that, huh? But what are you actually going to pick? No, it's Star Wars Queen's Gambit. I re- no, really, I seriously. I love this game. You've never even, Have you played this? I don't know. There are a bunch of, like, droids in it, right? There's a bunch of everything in it. And There's, it's got, like, three levels or two levels or something? Yeah, it's, and it's a great game. Yeah, but that part of the board is, like, I don't know. I thought you liked this game. I do. I do. Is that I a do. Jar Jar Binks? This is a number one, though. No, it's not Jar Jar Binks. I would paint no, him like blood guns. coming out. He got shot. <laughs> In my <laughs> movie, he gets shot. No, I mean, no, I, I do like the game. It's just that, I don't know, that the battlefield seemed like it was less a part of the game. But, it, I mean, I actually, I do pretty well at the game because most people think that the battlefield gives you cards for the other thing. I believe he just told me I was wrong. No, I, I'm saying I'm better at the game than Sam is. But... Um, the battlefield is a diversion, but that's why I like this so much because it's the same thing. In the movie, that battle did nothing. It meant nothing. So you're saying it's thematic? Yes. It has the lightsaber duel. It has Anakin flying a ship. Who cares about that? And the, and the game is like, yeah, that's not that big. I mean, it matters, but they're, they're going through the windows. It is fantastic, thematic. I really like this game a lot. So it's my number one for based on an IP. I really actually, I'll be honest, I don't remember if I've played it. I might have. And I don't recall. And That's if you can't get a hold of thank you. a copy of Star Wars Queen's Gambit, you can pick up what is it, Risk Star, Star Wars, Wars Risk. Star Wars Risk, or which something is like a that. another variation on it. It's not know. nearly as good, but it is a decent game for sure. Well, I think it's pretty similar. It's just it doesn't have that 3D uh, 3D aspect of it. I'm trying to figure out Z's number one. It really should be pretty obvious. Well, what theming has Z not done yet? You did Cthulhu already, right? Nope. Oh, no, you did it. Oh, okay, never mind. It's Arkham Horror, the card game. Yes. <laughs> Come on, cat. <laughs> it's Arkham Horror, the living card game, uh, which is a very open-ended system. They can go to a lot of places in the, in the system. The sort of like the bones of the structure allow for a lot of variability. 
you know, we were just talking earlier today, it happened to be, that we were mentioning news for this game. And there's an upcoming scenario in which you go to a hotel in which a murder has happened, and you're investigating there. And there are... Cthulhu. Cthulhu's there. I saw it. Yeah, I guess so. There you go. Boom, it's Cthulhu. Done. <laughs> but you can go, you know, there's one scenario in which you go to uh, Venice, and you are at Carnival, and there, is, there are strange mysteries afoot. Cthulhu. In that one, the way the locations are laid out, you can only move in a circle along the locations because people are marching. So you can't backtrack. You can't push your way back through people. Got it. But that's a thing that only happens in that one. In another scenario, it, the locations represent entire buildings in a town. In another scenario, each location represents one floor of a building, and you're climbing the building. You can take the elevator back down, stuff like that. That's what I mean by open ended. Can I take the elevator back up? Uh, I don't remember, but who cares? Um, <laughs> I really like this game. Man, if I, I, can gotta, play, I can play solitaire. I gotta investigate and walk upstairs. I ain't gonna do that. Ain't nobody got time for Man, walking. Ain't nobody talk, time for stairs. No, no, no. I really like this a lot. It's a well regarded game. And uh, this list is fantastic. I'll say it again. <laughs> Alrighty, here's your chance to ask us about why specific games did not make the list. Although we offer a lot of those, it's not going to be a lot. It's not going to be a lot of why they didn't this. Well, there's it, a right? lot of Dune. I like Dune, but the problem is Dune needs six players and takes six hours. I'll have to wait and see how the new one works. If you play with two players, will it take two hours? Well, I don't think you play with two actually. So um, no. Then of course people are picking different Star Wars and different Arkham games for sure. Um, Pete Shire wants to talk about the new Jaws game, but because uh, because he loved my man loved sharks. Is there a word? Oh, for Game, game of, of Thrones is a very close pick to the list. Game of Thrones does a really good job at covering the Game of Thrones. This is the original board game. That's a good choice. Was on my short list for sure. I never played it, and I don't like Game of Thrones that much as an IP for a board game. Shadows over Camelot. Oh yeah, this one I think we we came actually up talked about this. And I entertained the possibility, but it, it walks a line between, I don't know, I think it's a very, a very thin line. Is it actually an intellectual property, or is it a historical mythos, legend, that type of thing? Mm -hmm. I, and so I didn't include it for that reason. Sure. Someone said, uh, Super Motherload, well, it's not technically based on Dig Dug. And we didn't pick any games that... We all know what the IP is, but they didn't get the rights to it, or they made a generic mm -hmm. version. I have a top ten list of that on the other side of this paper, which I'll be publishing next week. Um, Sons of Anarchy. Sam, you liked that one a little, right? Well, I liked the game. I just didn't like the IP. Sure. So, um, Pokemon? No. Uh, <laughs> although Pokemon's like one of those weird ones where the the whole thing is so mixed that it's kind of confusing which one spawns mm -hmm. what. I know the, the card game came out after the other stuff, but... Um, Catan Game of Thrones? No. Mechs vs. Minions? That's interesting. That's based on... That's true. That's technically based on a video game, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not like the video game. The video game is a MOBA-type game. Mechs vs. Minions is something different. It takes that... It's like in the same universe, but... It's kind I, of like Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll try to talk about that. Oh, none of us put any Sherlock Holmes stuff on our lists. I thought about it. I, if I had to pick an 11th thing, it would be a Sherlock Holmes thing. I don't even know which one. Yeah, I don't, that's the thing. No one Sherlock Holmes, like, I like Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, but it's been murdered for it's me by... definitely not that one. By, uh... That's in depth of the, uh... I think I may have played that one. And hated it. That's one where you read through a book. Yes. Yes. And you read through a book. <laughs> and then you keep and reading. You're reading through a book. And the game says, stop whenever you want, whenever yeah. you feel like you've got it. Right. And I never stopped. I'm still there now. Pillars of the Earth is loosely based on the thing. Now that I've read the book, I can say it, but the book, and the game is good, but you can play the game not knowing about the book at all, and you'll be fine. Yeah. I can personally attest to the truth of that statement. World of Warcraft, the board game, not an option. Uh, we're talking about good games on this list. <laughs> World of Warcraft, the board game. I played that once, and I in that game you go around and fight monsters, but you can also have a PvP. Mm -hmm. There was one combat versus another player, 
that took one hour to complete one combat. I'm not exaggerating. What? I know. <laughs> what are you doing in the combat? You like roll dice, they roll dice, and eventually you figure it out, and okay, I lose a die from my pool. Let's do it again. Got it. It's like a war of attrition thing, oh, yes. but it took an hour. It took an hour. And if you're not involved in that... You're sitting there for an hour? <laughs> are you kidding? I'm not. I need, I need help. <laughs> it's okay. Hold me. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. Hold me closer. Narcos, Tentacle the board game? Demon. You play Narcos, right? Yeah. But you haven't seen the show. Right, so I don't know. <laughs> Harry Potter? Yeah, I thought about Harry Potter, but Harry Potter, the deck building game, is fine, but it's not strong enough to make the list for me. And there's not many Harry Potter games other than that. Well, I think there's, there's quite a few. There's but quite a few, but they're all like the mass market -y type stuff. Yeah. Harry Potter clues where it's at. What Sherlock Holmes? What was Sherlock Holmes murdered by? Oh, what's the 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 game with the, the QR codes? Um, Chronicles, Chronicles of, Chronicles of crime. crime. Yeah, I'll never play Sherlock Holmes. With Chronicles of Crime does the exact same thing. And at the end of the game, I don't have a snooty Sherlock Holmes show up and tell me how stupid I was. I do hate that jerk. <laughs> He's really jerky in that game. Tom, didn't you say you liked Imperial Salt more than Descent? Why is it not on the list? Well, because I, could, I only put one Star Wars game, and it was Queen's Gambit. But I could have put Imperial Salt, although... That's what I would have guessed. Imperial Salt's only loosely related to the movies. It's kind of like a group of characters that aren't in the movies, but it's the same IP. I could have put Rebellion. I mean, that's a great choice, too. I haven't played Outer Rim, but X-Wing and Armada both do a good job at bringing those ship battles to life. Mm -hmm. Star Wars CCG is a tempting thing. You know, there's a lot. Ooh, from Decipher. I've done a top 10 Star Wars games, so you can just go look what at that. What about the Star Wars trading card game that Wizards put out? CCG is what I was talking about, to be clear. Mm, you like that one. Huh? Uh, let's what see. about Young Jedi? Conan, no Ooh, one put. You take that back. <laughs> did, you think, did you consider Conan? But Conan, you Batman, yeah, I, I But did. you put Batman on the I list. I did, but I put Batman in. So it's No one put StarCraft on the list. <laughs> For the same reason why we never didn't again. Put World of Warcraft. How is Joan of Arc a thing? Joan of Arc is like an actual person. You can't. Yeah, that's not an IP. Yeah. That's not an intellectual Just to property. clear that up, you can look it up in the history book. She she lived. <laughs> Spartacus was okay. Never played it. Uh, Jurassic Park. Here's the thing: the Jurassic Park is just not as good as the non-Jurassic Park board games. They're, they better, do a better, better job. Obviously similar. Yeah. You know. So and Doom. Yeah, Doom wasn't bad, especially the new one was better than the, than the first one. Which right. One? There was a new one? Yeah, they came out with the, the one, uh, was it like a year ago? Two years ago? Yeah. Uh, Maybe it was two, two years Gen ago. Cons ago. Two Gen Cons? Or was From it three? FFG? No, it, well, sure we actually it played two. it in my old house, so it, couldn't have, it wasn't while we were here in the studio. Okay. It, it was like this. Fantasy Flight was like, here's a new Doom! Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those games. Did not yeah. know that that had been reprinted. Yeah. Okay. okay um, so some people have asked this. I didn't pick anything from D and D because D and D is a game. Right. So we didn't pick games built on other games. That's kind of weird to me. To I know. How to. I know that D and D has expanded beyond a game. It's now in movies and books and stuff. But it started as a game. It'd be weird to do a game based on a game. I thought. Sure. Sure. We want a different. Uh, I, media. I, yeah, we talked about this as well, and and I can see where. For example, the Castle Ravenloft game, that might be based on the book, Castle Ravenloft. Because there was a book, if I'm not mistaken. Sure, but I mean, I think that that book is based on the actual, someone made a Ravenloft setting for D&D. That's like there's a Waterdeep setting. I don't know. I don't know. So, so. alrighty. Well, that's that, folks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, with a back talk, and we'll be doing another top 10 list in a week. Our top 10 anticipated games for Gen Con. We'll be doing actually a little bit more Gen Con coverage next week. You'll have to come back and watch it. Yes. Until then, no, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks, everybody. <coughs> Did you 18. vomit a dye? No, I coughed it out. Ah. It's kind of like a hairball, but different. I'm Sam Healy. See you on the flip side. Take care. <laughs>
If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.